what, I, what I'm doing now is I'm desensitizing him to the lead rope. So I'm going to stand back over here. I'm going to get the end of it and just toss it over his back slowly right now. Goes to me. I'm just going to go with him. Well, this kind of goes to show that when you've done all the rest of the steps from the beginning, the desensitizing is not that big of a deal. It's not that difficult. He's already trusting you. And he expects good things to happen. He's not worried about his legs being caught or things swinging around him. So today we're working on desensitizing him. Uh, horses usually are scared and reactive to objects that move and make a noise. And, uh, you know, Zora is doing incredible because of the imprinting and because of all the desensitizing we did uh, day one, because of the trust he has for us and just for life in general. He is born in the world, doesn't know anything, and even though he is... A prey animal, he has uh, experienced only good things coming to him since birth. So um, he is not very reactive. Uh, but if he was to be reactive, all we need to do is follow him wherever he goes uh, and keep applying the pressure until he relaxes and then we retreat. This is why it is so important that you don't start desensitizing until the fall knows uh, a little bit of how to, you know, navigate his feet and his body weight. And he has learned to lead uh, and, uh, you know, back up and, and, and just feel that uncomfortable halter pressure on his head without um, sending him into a reaction. Also, remember that whatever you do on one side, you have to repeat on the other side. Now what I'm doing is desensitizing him to the stick and string. So I'm first just going to go grab him, grab him on his back, behind him, gather his legs. Move him, I'm just going to pull him back here. Front leg, stomach. It is amazing how well he is doing, uh, but again, this is what happens when you do the right thing from the start. I've worked with uh, plenty of adult horses who are super scared uh, as soon as you start swinging the lead rope over them or the stick and string. And it's so important that horses have confidence in our tools. Our tools are used as an extension of our arms. And there should be no fear associated with uh, any stick string uh, whip crop and so on that we are using uh, but again he doesn't expect anything bad to happen to him so he's accepting it pretty well even under his belly and on his legs uh, and again this is what happens when you do the right thing from the beginning
Now here he is just a little bit confused as to what he's supposed to do with it. But um, this is not due to his being fearful. It's just he's like, well, I don't know what you want me to do. I may as well walk around. Uh, ideally, he would stop and uh, we would swing the string all over him and he would just stand there and fall asleep. But uh, this is a starting point for him. The big point is he is not scared. So when he's thinking about leaving, you gently bump his nose towards you. But if he's backing up, you kind of follow him. You don't stop him from moving. You just follow him until he decides to stop. So this is where, where he goes forward. You move his head towards you. You tip his nose towards you. And if he's backing up, that's when you follow him. And I'm going to come to the other side. We're going to start swinging over the back. And it's a pull and release when you try to uh, tip his nose towards you. Yeah. It's pull and release, pull and release. It's never really steady pressure. It's more of a driving pressure. Bump, bump, bump. <laughs> Later on we're definitely teaching him about personal space. <laughs> right now he's a very friendly foal, so he yeah. wants to come and be with you. He so doesn't later on know we're better. gonna teach him about personal space and not to crowd people. But the point is he's not scared of the rope. Mm -hmm. Alright. I'm kinda just gonna ignore that right now. is to go backwards I'm we must go follow with. the fall because they can get too excited and flip over and there's no need for that you know we want to allow his feet to move but okay. he gets a release of pressure when his feet stop moving and he's licking and chewing that's another sign he's good with that and now I'm going to start spanking the ground So we start away from him, and he could care less. Look at him scratching his butt. <laughs> Good boy. Any closer? So we're careful not to whack him because he may move um, kind of unexpectedly. You want to start thinking harder? Now there's a little reaction there. So I think that you gotta just have a starting point for the first session and don't move beyond that for the first session. Okay, he blinked, which is another sign of him relaxing. He stopped his feet and he blinked. And so the pressure goes away. And now keep doing it on this side, just less pressure.
There, he stopped and he's blinking. Oh, I'm going to come kind of do it behind him a little bit. So ideally, Theona would have better rhythm when she's spanking. Um, but again, none of this needs to be perfect. She is uh, barely 10 years old in this video. And um, this is the false first day of desensitizing. So he doesn't have to be perfect. What I love about what's happening is that he is not scared, definitely. I mean, he may have a little bit of reaction, but I think he becomes um, more curious uh, rather than more scared. And um, this is what we want. On this side now. So here she released at the wrong time. Ideally, you release the pressure when uh, the horse stops moving his feet and um, shows you a sign of relaxation, which could be anywhere from a sigh to a cocked leg, lowering their head, blinking, um, or just standing still for more than 15 seconds. But um, it is hard sometimes when they're moving around to try to focus on uh, managing them and not trying to evoke the uh, reaction of them pulling back and flipping over uh, and keeping the stick moving. But it all comes from practice. And uh, at this early stage, uh, no damage done. Uh, as she continued working with him uh, in later days, they both got much better about, you know, standing still and swinging the stick. <laughs> What I do love about what Theona is doing here is that she is trying to keep her own body as still as possible to communicate um, lower energy to the fall and uh, calm him down instead of uh, moving her own feet, which then would cause him to move his feet even more. sure that if he does come at me he will be being himself Maybe shorten your lead um, rope. He doesn't exhibit fearful behavior necessarily. This is more of him being annoyed and kind of done with the lesson and unsure about what we want him to do and therefore annoyed, but not really fearful. So because this fall is so pushy, before we can even desensitize him to the stick and string, we got to teach him how to, to remind him rather, how to go backwards because he um, runs on top of you. So I apply, I have the lead shape here very short. And when he's pushing, I apply pressure to his chest. So I pull a little bit on the halter, but the most of the pressure comes from the chest. And then I release and he, so I ask with the halter and I tell with the chest. So he still has that pressure from the halter. So he can start learning, then when I pull back on the halter, it means back up, right? But to help him understand and not let him freak out because he's not used to having stuff around his face, I just ask him with my hand on his chest here, and I'm very gentle. So I always try to ask just with the slightest touch and then reward. Slightest touch, come back, and reward. And I use my words because I like my horses to know English. Right? Back. And there you go. And so now I could start then slapping the ground and just apply the same thing. If he wants to run on top of me, then I just ask him to back up because now he understands the concept of that. And I just want a starting point. He doesn't have to 
to be perfect. This is his first session. He doesn't know the whip. This is the first time he's seeing it. So it's a very gentle kind of whip. And he's standing, so I'm going to release him and just uh, pet him, rub him with it. But also, I don't want him to run over me. So, and that is exactly what he's doing. So if he does that, I'm going to pull him back. Or push him rather. And, and then, of course, if he wants to go backwards, then I'll follow him. Good boy. So now I start slapping again. And if he comes on top of me, I got to push him away. Mm -hmm. That's why I have the, the rope very, very short. See here? I got to push him away. He'll learn, but it just takes repetition. And now I would reward by rubbing him. So, every fall is different. That's kind of what we ran into here when we were trying to follow. See that? Always be on your guard and tip the nose forward and then back him up. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, well, I hope that helps if you run into the same problem. And this is the very next morning. Um, huge difference. He is definitely not as reactive. He had learned to not necessarily walk over you. He could be a little further, but again, uh, this is only his second Stay time encountering the stick and string. It it so um, we're pretty happy with that. Stay in the 45 degree angle so that you can have a better... But yeah, no reaction. How about front feet? I know it's harder. Good. No head shyness. Yeah, you've done a good job. What about if you hug him like you're giving him a ride? a really good job and he's away from mom yeah mom's over there eating with the and others mom is over there he's over here they really don't care anymore where yeah. each other are because there's like all kinds of critters right? He, they know that nothing's gonna happen he doesn't expect anything bad thanks for watching